Hey guys, how's it going? I'm really excited today to be showing you my new Notion setup for 2021, which I'm calling the Focused Mind. This system, man, it's been a complete game changer in my productivity, helping me align my goals with projects and daily tasks. And I'm just finding now that this system is making it so easy for me to have a constant throughput of valuable work so I can just focus on the things that matter and forget about the things that don't. So let's have a look at the system. First, I'm gonna talk you through just generally how it's structured, uh, go into a bit of theory behind the databases and how they work together. And then I'm just gonna take you through step-by-step step how I use it to set up goals, projects, tasks, and also my second brain. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a really valuable one for you guys. I'm going to leave the template for this in the description. So let's have a look. So the first thing for us to really think about is how the database itself is actually structured. And I think it's really important that we get our head around this before we dive into the system. Now, one of the sort of key rules, I suppose, for using Notion is that you want to create single tables and then from those tables or databases, spin out multiple different views. So I've split up the focused mind into two different zones and we have the focus zone and we have the mind zone. Now the focus zone is where I'm focusing on execution, I'm focusing on getting things done and the mind zone is really my second brain. So how the focus zone works is I have three different databases. I have a goals database, a project database and a task database. Now, from the goals database, I can spin out a view, which is a goals timeline, the same with projects. And then with tasks, I spin out three different views, which is a daily view, a weekly view, and a habit tracking view. Now, the focus zone links with the mind zone, not in terms of how the databases are related, but just in terms of how I use them. And with the mind zone, we first have a sort of brain dump database, and this is going to be where everything that I consume, all the media, tweets, blogs, books, is going to be collected. And then I have my second brain. So in total, in this whole system, there's only actually five databases. And I think this sort of simplicity on having this few amount of databases is what makes it really effective. So enough of the theory, let's have a look at the actual system itself. So the first thing we'll notice is that when I'm in the focus zone here, it's just pretty clean and minimal. I have goals, I have projects, I have tasks, and I also have a daily view. I then have this little kind of graphic here, which just helps me focus between different kinds of moods that I might be in, so that I know that when it's time to focus and get shit done, I'm in that mood, and when it's time to rest and not look at Notion, I'm in the rest mood. Now, how I'll usually go around structuring my thoughts when I first come into here is I'm going to start out with a goal. And this might be something that I'll set every three months, every six months, every year. But the idea is that I come into the timeline view and what I'm going to do is just drag out a goal. Then I'm going to click in here and then I'm going to use the goal template that I've set up. So let's say I have a goal of losing five kilograms of weight. I can then type that in and press the goal template button and what that is then going to do is generate this sort of framework of how I should really think about goals. So the first thing I'm just going to type in is what's the goal going to be. I'm then going to think about how much is this goal within my control. So one of my main, I guess, complaints with goal setting is that often we can set goals that are way outside of our zone of control. We can try and set goals for things like, I wanna get this many YouTube subscribers, or I wanna get a raise, or I wanna do all these different things. But often these are things that there's so many external influences come into play that it can be a bit demotivating and a bit anxiety inducing, to be honest, to set these kinds of goals. So when I'm thinking about a goal, I'm always trying to focus on things that I can directly get in control. So in this case, losing weight, it's just a matter of eating less calories than I'm burning. It's completely within my control. So I'm just gonna rate this a 10 out of 10. And if you wanna check out more about how I go around goal setting, I'll leave a card here for a video that you can check out. Now here I'm going to now answer what's the appetite for the goal. I think this is really important to set from the start 
how long are you willing to spend on chasing a certain goal? Is it something that you're only willing to put a month or two months or is it something you're willing to put a year into? I think this is really important to set from the outset because often if we're say a month into a six month goal, we can easily start to lose motivation if we don't see the results. But if we've set up front that no, I'm gonna stick through with this goal for the six months, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to stay focused on that and to understand how much time we can commit to it. So here I'm just gonna set a goal of, let's say four months. The next question that I'm gonna answer is how this goal contributes towards my vision. Now a vision is something that I could take a whole video to talk about, but basically the idea is that you want some sort of guiding principles for your life, which your goals are going to help you achieve. So for me, my vision is to share ideas and create products that make people's lives simpler. And I can't do that if I'm not healthy and happy and in a good mood so I can create these kinds of videos. So I'm just gonna go and write that down now. So now we've got the goal set up, this is where things get quite interesting because from this view, we can actually relate projects to that goal. Now, the difference between goals and projects is goals are sort of overarching things that we want to achieve, whereas projects are very specific results that we can deliver on. So a project might be something that you can do within six weeks, you can say, this is completed. I think a project should probably last between one or six weeks, any more than six weeks, and to be honest in my eyes, it's more a goal or you wanna break that down into something smaller, and anything less than a week, it's not really something that you can achieve a significant amount of work doing. So I'm gonna just set a few projects now that I think are gonna to contribute towards this goal. So one of them might be to complete Wix six week diet plan. And another thing that I might look at doing is completing Jeff Nippard's six week training program. And these are two little projects that I can set a start date from and an end date to, and definitely know when those projects are gonna be delivered. Now I'm not actually gonna add anything more in the project here, apart from maybe open this up and use one of my project templates. So here I have a couple, I have strategic projects, which is for these kinds of things, just general projects that don't have any specific tasks that are related to them. And then I also have YouTube videos. So if I go into here and select the strategic projects, this is then gonna give me another template to fill in about this particular project, which is just gonna help me focus on making sure that it gets delivered. I'm also gonna create another project for this, which is gonna to be to create a YouTube video on my journey. And the great thing is with these projects that we just created is because we've got a filter applied here that's specifically relating these projects to the template that we've just created, all of the projects that we make are gonna be related to the goal. So now we've made the goal and we've made a few projects, it's really just a case of coming into the projects tab here and clicking on no day. So now we've got these projects created, we can move away from the goals database and come into the projects database, which is again in a timeline view. So what I'm gonna do here is come into the no date and add these three different projects that I've made. So these are things that are gonna go on for six weeks. So let me just move this out. I'm gonna actually move this into quarter because they're a little bit longer and pull it out into kind of, I don't know, the middle of Feb, let's say around February the 7th. And I'll do that with all of them. Maybe actually the YouTube video is probably something I'm gonna do at the very end of the process. And let's say that that's only gonna be a couple of weeks long. So let's drag that like this. And now I've got the project set up, I just wanna put a bit more detail into what these projects are gonna be. So if I come into here, you'll see that I've got another couple of templates that I can use. I've got strategic projects and I've got YouTube videos. So this one is definitely a strategic project. It's nothing related to a YouTube video. So let's go ahead and create that. And all I'm gonna just put in here is the focus of the project, which is say to complete this program and get swooled. And from here, I can also add in tasks. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the different tasks that I might add, but let's say that this has a Monday workout. 
and a Tuesday workout. I can just add these in and then later on we can assign a date for these different workouts. Now when I come into creating the YouTube video, I can actually use a slightly different project, which is the YouTube video project template. And something that's really cool about this is that I've already created tasks that can be done that are definitely specific for this project. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. So all I need to do is pull these tasks into here. And what it's automatically gonna do is create the different tasks that need to be done for a video. So researching the title, scripting, filming, editing, and then again, relate it to the project that's just been created. So now we've got the goal, which is losing five kilograms of weight. We've got a few different projects, such as doing these uh, training programs, a diet plan, and creating a video around it. Now it's time to put in the tasks. And this, I think, is the most important thing because we've taken this high-level overarching goal of something that I want to do, you know, a weight that I want to lose or something that I want to achieve, and we're breaking it down into actionable things that we can complete on a daily basis. So what I'll do now is come into the tasks database and again, click on no date. And I'm gonna have all of these different tasks that I've created and all I need to do is just click on them to add them into the calendar. And then it's just a case of dragging these to the day that I'm gonna do them. So let's say I've got this Monday workout, okay? I'll do that on the Monday. Then I have the Tuesday workout, which I'll move into Tuesday. And then let's say the video I wanted to do here uh, let's say the script I do the day before, I'm going to do editing the day after, I'll obviously research the day before the script, and then I'll do the thumbnail and upload. I don't know what this one is here, so I'm just going to delete that. Now obviously, given the timeline to the project that I've just made, uh, this wouldn't make sense because the YouTube video comes a lot later, but just for demonstration purposes, you can see how easy it is now for me to combine different projects together, balance them, but ultimately make sure that they end up getting done. So the other thing that we have when we're doing a weekly plan is the recurring tasks. So I prefer to use template buttons when it comes to recurring tasks because I don't really like the formula because it doesn't allow you to see all of the tasks in a single calendar view like this. And all I'm gonna do is click on weekly tasks. This is gonna generate all of the tasks that I wanna do on a weekly basis. So I've got seven journals, I've got seven morning routines, and I've got a weekly review. And then it's just a case of me dragging these into the day that makes sense. And the great thing is that as all these tasks are templates, I can come into here and see exactly the template that I have for the weekly journal. I can fill that in on a daily basis, completely eliminates the friction for me. And the same with the morning routine. I can come in here, I can check off all of the things that I do every morning. And I can also see for my morning routine, how my habits are going by just slipping into this morning routine view. And then I can see, okay, on the 11th, I did you know, all of the exercises. What have I got coming up for each of the different days? Which is just you know, something quite nice to have. It's not the most robust of habit trackers. If you're looking for a really great habit tracker, I'd recommend that you check out my friend, uh, Daniel Canosa. He's done a really great one that is pretty intricate and will really help you achieve your goals if you're looking for uh, sort of getting a habit instilled so be sure to check that out if you're interested the only other view that we have in the focus zone is the daily view here now this is currently empty and that's because i haven't actually got any tasks that are assigned today but if i drag these ones here into the ninth which is the day that i'm filming this video they're going to appear here in the no status column and then i just need to drag these into to do and then I'm going to have a really good Kanban board, which is just going to show me all of the tasks that I need to do today, where I'm at with them. And it's just a great way to focus me on the day ahead. The next view that we have is the mind zone. And just to remind you on the structure of this, we effectively have one big brain dump database and another smaller second brain database. And from the brain dump database, we're spinning out a few different views. So we have the book tracker, and this is just all books that you ever want to read or ever have taken notes on. We also have a music tracker, which just shows me different albums that I might have listened to. And we also have the resonance calendar. Now I much prefer having a resonance calendar as something that's integrated with my overall brain dump because it means that when I capture something, it's already in the place where I'm gonna expect it to be. I don't need to drag from a separate resonance calendar database into something else. It's just a linked view of my brain dump. 
and you can see here that I've captured a few ideas. Um, you know, there's a few tweets here that I've really enjoyed that I've just put into my resonance calendar. Now, the thing is with the mind zone is that this information, while it's really cool to have, you know, that I can come into a book and I can see all of the different highlights that I've made, it's not really that usable. I mean, how often am I really going to come in here and like reread some of the books that I've ever consumed? It's probably not that likely. And that's why we need to take this a step further and actually categorize this information into our second brain. So how I do this is I have a list of all of the different items that I need to categorize. If you remember going back into here, we have different stages of books from wanting to read them to them being currently being read to being able to wanting to categorize them and finally having them categorized. And this is just a simple list view that's filtering out all of the different books that I need to categorize. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to start taking information from these books and moving them into my second brain. And how I do this is I'll come into a page, which is effectively a piece of media. Then I'll come in and I'll find a certain highlight that springs out to me. How I usually do this is I'll schedule about 20 to 30 minutes every other week to do this. So if I've come in here and I found a really nice quote that I like, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'm then gonna put it into my second brain as a new entry. I'm gonna put it in as the title and the description. The reason for that will become clear in a minute. I'm then gonna bold this and I'm like, I might make a little comment on it. And then I'm just gonna give it a category. So this one is really about consciousness and it's also about growth. And then I'm just gonna relate it to the book that it's come from or the tweet or whatever it might be. And then that's something that's categorized into my second brain. From here, I can now view this in a couple of different ways. So I can go into a note card view, which is where I can see all of my categorized information in my second brain, you know, by the different category, by the book that it relates to, or the tweet, whatever it might be. And I can also go into the categories view, which is gonna show me all the different categories that I've made and everything that I've fed into this. This becomes so useful when I'm looking to create content on a specific subject, because I can just browse through here and pull out information of past things that I've read. And I can also see some really valuable use cases for this where you could get really technical in it. Let's say you're a software developer and you know, you're reading books on you know the architecture of systems and then you're pulling out notes from those books and feeding them into your second brain you're then going to have a wealth of information on that specific area of expertise so I really do think that it's worth taking the extra time to categorize that information that's been brain dumped and put it into a second brain where you can have that information readily accessible at your fingertips in this system, I also have a load of other cool templates, which I'm not going to go into detail in this system, but they're things that are going to help you manage your spending, get your fitness on track, that kind of thing, and really just useful tools to have in your arsenal. So that's basically a summary of the focused mind. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a system that's really worked for me. I've been sort of refining it and tweaking it over the last few weeks with a few sort of beta testing users, and I'd love to get your feedback on it. Like I say, you can check out the template itself in the description, but thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.